So, in the end, what can I say about that episode of Mob Psycho 100? It was a pretty great episode, I must say. The most interesting point for me was Ritsu's character, Mob's brother. His character is freaking interesting because we understand he is the complete antithesis of Mob. He is basically everything that Mob isn't. He's good at sports, he's got good grades, he's got everything that Mob doesn't. Besides one thing, he doesn't actually have psych abilities, Mob does. And when you think about it, is he actually jealous that he actually does have such abilities and he doesn't? Is that the whole thing with Ritsu's character? Does he actually also want it? Because he does, in this episode, say, I wish for these abilities. I'm, I'm his younger brother. I actually wish for these abilities. It might just come to me one day. So I can imagine that maybe there might be an area of jealousy to his character that, yeah, in essence, Ritsu has everything. He is that kind of character that does have everything he needs. He's popular, good grades, good at sports. But he still to ha he still tries to have more, and he wants the one thing that Mob has that he doesn't. And I think that's actually kind of interesting because in this episode, Ichi actually basically pulls him in and says, "Look, okay, so I've got some, I've got some scoop for you. Look, dude, something happened with your brother. I need to tell you right now." He's all like, "So did something happen with my brother?" And then basically, she explains that what happened with the religious people from last week, and. There, that was interesting as well, because we all know what happened with Dimple Summer. He got completely decimated. In this episode, he actually returned as a spirit. That actually kind of is with Mob now. And what happens is she explains that because of that charisma outburst, it actually managed to actually convert everyone to actually want him as the religious figure. It converts Mob into this religious figure. It converts him into this person that everyone wants to follow now, which is actually mildly interesting. And then what happens is Itchy basically says, look, I just want him to get more recognition. And she says, I just want your point of view. And he declines the offer and walks out. And then she basically says, okay, so he's got everything that Mob hasn't got. What's going on here? Not everyone is born equally. And it actually kind of does actually tell the truth. Not everyone in this world is born equally. It happens in this world. It happens in Mob's world. Not everyone's born equally. Some people have more than others. But there's sometimes there's something that you have that other person doesn't have and they want it as well, which is actually mildly interesting because you do see with Ritsu's character. Ritsu kind of wants psychic abilities as well because it's his standard. That's a standard he's seen in his life. Since Mob has been born, he's had psychic abilities. So throughout his whole life, throughout Ritsu's life, he has seen psychic abilities. So it's basically his standard. So he kind of also wants it as well. So it's actually mildly interesting. But that isn't the whole entire episode. Because the whole entire episode really does focus on Tenga wanting revenge on Teru. Because Teru actually defeats Tenga in the beginning of the episode. Tenga is his kind of hothead. He's a delinquent. He wants revenge on Teru. Teru's this self-like kind of righteous asshole. He's this person that sees himself as the protagonist of the world. He says, if I have people in debt to me, it's actually really freaking good. The power will be freaking great for me. And yeah, I was kind of sitting here going, oh, freaking hell, he's one of these characters. He's, th he's that kind of dude that he is so far from his own ass. If he goes any more up there, he will create a black hole. He will be a black hole of arseness. That's what the main thing, that's his character. He's a black hole of arseness. And yeah, it is shown throughout this whole entire episode. He really does kind of evoke this whole idea. He's extremely popular with people. He's really, really like kind of popular with girls as well. He's just that kind of person that you just hate. I just don't know, and in the end of the episode, he basically uses his abilities against people that Mob doesn't like seeing. He doesn't like seeing those things used against people. So I'm guessing, as my theory kind of just, I guess my theory might prevail, it's the whole idea that I think Mob will use his abilities against Teru, and it actually will make him realise that someday, sometimes you actually have to use it. You can't get away from that idea. But the other thing was, how... In the end, Tenga actually got Mob there and actually got the other like body improvement people there as well. Because, as well, the other thing to note is how the body improvement club are against violence. They're against violence. They're against the whole idea of using your body for petty things, using your strength for petty things. That's why they won't actually help out Tenga and his crew because they think, okay, so you're gonna use your you're gonna use your strength just to take down people. We don't like that whole idea. But in this episode, we also saw them have to use their strength. For violence to actually get out of the situation because in the end what happens is Mob actually gets fooled by a love letter. He says, look, okay, so I, I can't decline this letter. I can't just say it's a lie because what happens if a girl did write this? It would be really bad for me not to go there. So Dimple Simon's all like, no fam, look, listen to me. This isn't true. This isn't anything. Just don't believe it. But he does because he's never received a love letter before. So he kind of just imagines that, God, this woman loves me, she adores me, I have to go there and meet her. But in the end, no, because it's the Black Vinegar School people that actually go there instead. And they actually capture Mob. 
But then what happens is National Body Improvement Club see a letter beneath a dumbbell that says we actually have mob and then they actually basically storm out 100% strength there to go take down some foes. And they do because what happens is Tenga uses mob as bait to bring out everyone else. So then Tenga can actually strike at that point. He can actually take down Teru and actually exert his revenge, which he kind of sort of does. But when he goes after Teru, he actually can't hit him because he's this powerful he's he's an esper he's an esper he has such abilities he can't actually defeat him in the end 10 gets defeated once again but now it's this whole fight that maybe will happen between teru and mob it's gonna be a freaking interesting fight to say the least because i don't i just don't know what's gonna happen i don't know whether or not he's gonna go 400 percent and actually release his emotions once again if it does it will be freaking interesting to see because again i said countless times in, in his review mob is an advocate against using his Psychic abilities against people. In essence, he says it to everyone. In essence, he doesn't like doing it. But I think it's this. This is going to be the time when he's going to actually release his powers. Like last week was the time he's going to release all his emotions and actually turn into GTFO out of here, mob. Like I just don't know because he looks like it's going. To, it's going to happen again. It's going to. He's going to take down Teru and Teru will see the see the light. Like he just can't be a self righteous asshole and actually just see himself as the best person ever. There's actually people who are stronger than him as well because. I don't know, Teru in this episode was insufferable sometimes. <laughs> I mean, he's just that kind of character you just love to hate. He's done so freaking down wrong. Kirito voices him as well, so Betty Lagoose also voices him. So, in essence, when you think about it, Kirito's gone places. He's gone from being the harem dude to being the asshole to being the murderous psychopath. So he's actually gone an interesting route. But he plays a part really well. He plays a part of a person who's self-righteous, who is so far up his own heart, if he goes anymore to create a black hole. He plays a part so freaking down well. And yeah, I really do like the episode overall. And at the end, that whole entire animation scene when the body improvement club go against Teru was freaking amazing to watch as well. And that whole fight when the, <laughs> when Black Vinegar School go against the body improvement club, you just saw them decimate them within an instant. They didn't really read back a sweat. It was so freaking interesting to watch. I really do love the body improvement club. They are these people who I can really just get behind. They're actually freaking great. So yes. With all that said, I have been a driver. If you have enjoyed the video and you didn't leave a like, do leave a like because it does help me quite a bit. If you have enjoyed my content as a whole and you do leave a sub, do leave a sub because it does help me quite a bit. But with all that said, I have been the driver and I will see you guys later. Side note to everyone who thinks I might have dropped a series or, or two. I actually haven't dropped any series. I'm actually trying to get through them slowly. So you, just in case you might think, oh, I dropped orange or I dropped anything like that, I haven't. I'm just getting to it really freaking slowly. So yes. We're about to driver, and I will see you guys later. Bye for now.